Hi, welcome to Nevin's Lab, and today we have a review for the Goblin RTA, or Rebuildable Tank Atomizer, by UD Technologies, or UD. Uh, I've had this for several weeks, I've been vaping on it a lot. I, I really like this tank, it's, uh, it, the flavour is great and it's easy to build on, and uh, well, let's have a quick vape. So it's on my smock this is a smock bt50 and i've got it at 31 watts that's really nice a really good flavor nice deep rich flavor from it it's a nice warm vape uh, I've got that fully open there. It's not a real. Uh, I do lung hit, and and you can get a a steady lung hit with it, but it's not like a cloud chasing dripper where you really uh, suck it in like you're uh, about to go diving or something like that. Um, but it's really great flavour, and I actually quite quite like to uh, knock the the hole down to about halfway it gives you a slightly tighter draw and increases the flavor and the warmth just a little bit uh, still taking it straight into my lungs but in a sort of more uh, casual way which is how I actually like to vape I, I'm not a real heavy hitter um, it's 304 brushed stainless steel. It comes in the box with two tank sections. This is the larger tank section, it takes 4.2 mils. That's, it comes out of the box with this smaller tank section, which is three mils of juice capacity on that one. Uh, there's a little chimney piece. There's a short chimney piece for uh, the smaller tank and uh, if you can see inside there it'll show up in the close-ups you've got a taller chimney piece for the larger tank section uh, it's really easy to build on it's really easy to wick on it's got a very similar deck to the orchid tank uh, which is derived from the plume veil dripper so it's a style that you'll recognize if you're familiar with those there's a few other devices out there that have a similar style deck on them uh, so it's particularly easy to put your coils into but the benefit of this over the orchid orchid that i found is i find this easier to get a successful wicking on than i have with my orchid and uh, it's just it's just great it's a f it, it, it's uh, got very few faults with it and for the price so it's currently available on cloud9 vaping for 27 pounds and 95 pence so under 30 quid and this is a great little tank so uh, now just to let you know i did a video with a close-ups video with a full build and wicking and everything and uh I've started editing it together and with an intro and uh, and a conclusion at the end it's coming out about 40 minutes so what I think I'm gonna do is we're gonna go down into the close-ups for this video and I'm just gonna show you what comes in the kit and how to put the thing together uh, but I'm not gonna include the build and the wicking in this video I'm gonna do a separate tutorial video uh, cut from the same uh, film that I did uh, previously and uh, there'll be a separate tutorial video coming up at the same time as this one on my channel showing you how to build and wick this device uh, uh, that's working for me and I've, I've built this several times four or five times now and uh, it, I'm vaping it every day uh, all day and it's absolutely great so let's go down to the close-ups for the what you get in the kit 
and we'll see you in a bit. So that's the box, usual UD packaging. If you've uh, bought anything else from them, you'll recognize the style. Little manual and slide that out. And there is the old goblin. out and flip it over and on the back you get a, a taller chimney section and a taller glass tank for the increased capacity mode and your usual bag of bits. You've got some bits of canthal in there. There's one spare grub school grub screw and a couple of bow wings. So we'll set the uh, larger pieces aside and we'll take this apart. Basically, you just twist it, and the the top will come off. Uh, that's threaded in there is is threaded on the top of the chimney section, so that would uh, fit on there. We'll get to that in a second. First thing I'm going to do is is show you what's involved in taking it between the, the two sizes. So that's your small glass tank. It's a very thick Pyrex, quite a hefty Pyrex tank. I reckon they could get away with um, a, a lot thinner glass and that would m make one improvement which I'll come to later. So you put the larger, actually no, get it right. So you take the top off of the chimney section, replace it with the taller chimney, put the bigger glass section on and that's it in big mode. This gives you 4.3 I think mil of juice in this mode. Three mil of juice with the with the smaller. If I've got that wrong, then there'll be a message here telling telling you that I'm an idiot and what the real capacity is. So we'll take it the rest of it apart. So they unscrew. All the threads seem pretty pretty reasonable. I've not had any problems with any of the threads. Uh, it all unscrews very smoothly. So that's the outside. You might see some mucky bits. I have been using this uh, probably for about a week or two um, before the review. So if it looks a bit mucky, it's my cleaning isn't isn't its best. So that ring comes off. Interesting to note this thread here is the same size and thread as a K-Fun. But I've tried multiple different, I've got a K-Fun V4 and I've got a Orchid V4, both of which use the same threading. Um, but I can't make any combination of pieces fit, so you can't swap pieces around. I know that you can between the, the K-Funs and the Orchids if you feel like messing around uh, the the threading on the top of the chimney here is different than the threading on the top of the K-Fun V4 so you can't mess about and do that in combination that ring there you'll see the little indent inside here so that goes over the o-ring you if you try and put it 
put it on that way don't force it because you'll just shred your o-ring uh, it only goes on one way it's quite a smooth um, motion there quite a, quite a smooth movement it's not too loose it's not too tight I can grip it and turn it like this it is a bit more difficult when it's screwed down on your mod because uh, it's at the bottom and, and getting to it is a bit tricky uh, but it can be done and that's your upside down deck that's your deck so the deck looks very much like a, a orchid deck which originates I believe from the plume veil dripper uh, this is very popular layout these days and it's very easy to build on the holes oh, excuse me the holes are a decent size and the thing I like these screws I don't know if that's going to focus for me you see those screws although they're tiny the cross head in them actually goes all the way edge to edge so that means that even the bigger slightly bigger screwdrivers fits in really nicely uh, of all of the tiny screws that I've used in various devices these are by far the best they just fit my screwdrivers really well they don't feel like you're gonna slip and shred the heads on them uh, really nice little touch I, um, hats off to, to UD for, for getting that bit right because normally especially when you want to try and tighten things up it can be such a pain if the heads on the screws aren't particularly good so I've undone those uh, size of the holes I've meshed this I'm going to make a guesstimate here So they are one and a half mil holes uh, for putting your wires into. I'd say that's that's plenty big enough for anything you'd want to build in this deck. The size, the size of the deck, edge to edge, is smaller than the orchid, um, and therefore smaller than. The K fund because I believe that the the K funds with the chimneys I don't have one um, have the same size chimney. The, the chimney for the orchid slides over this, so this is a smaller space to work in. But it doesn't. The thing I like about this is the the, the juice wells here, the channels, are really nice and deep, and they've that's meant that. I don't have any problems with getting this to wick nicely. Uh, I've had an awful lot of issues with trying to get the orchid to wick properly. It's either getting dry hits or it's flooding on me. Uh, this one, spot on. I haven't had any problems at all. It may be luck, more luck than judgment, but uh, that's been my experience. So let's put a little build in this. Quick reminder, this bit here is where I cut out the section with the build tutorial. Uh, if you want to watch the build tutorial, go to my other video in the channel which uh, includes the entire build. Now let's move on to, I've just finished the build and we complete putting the tank together and then finish the review. See you in a second. And then you just basically just check that I had the right in the right way up because it will screw on both ways round. Uh, not that it matters, but you want it to be the right way up, don't you? 
screw that down. I'm just going to quickly check that. Um, plug it in. Just going to quickly check that I haven't created any shorts or hot spots or anything. That seems to be going well. Yeah, lovely. Chimney piece on. I'm going to go for the smaller of the two tank sections. Put the bottom piece on, the tank on, and top piece. And we're ready to fill it up. Now here is one of my bugbears. This bottom filling hole comes out right under the deck and there really isn't an awful lot of space. So I'm going to use a syringe. What I've got in there, I've got uh, five mils of juice in there and I'm going to fill it up with that and just watch what happens. So we start filling up and all's well. You can see the juice going down inside. The problem comes as we start getting close to full. There we go. Now you see there that air bubble rising up. Okay, that one's not too bad. Put a bit more juice in. You see it's all running out the top there. And I'm being really gentle here, really gentle filling this up. But just because of the position of the hole and how thick the glass is, and this is what I was talking about, the thickness of the glass. If the glass had been just that fraction thinner, there would be more space down here between the deck and the inside of the glass for the airlocks to release as you fill it up and you not end up with such a mess. And it's exactly the same if you use the little plastic bottles. Uh, normally filling something up with one of these syringes is by far the easiest. It just takes forever. I've got to wait for, so I've got to wait for this bubble to find its way up between the glass and and the tank uh, or in the chimney and and make its way to the top so that there's room for a bit more juice. So yeah, to be honest, I can't be bothered to put any more in there. So I've put just under three mils of juice in there, so it's almost full. But according to the spec, I should be able to get more in there. But I can't be bothered. Uh, one last thing that I forgot to mention, the 510 pin on the bottom. A well done UD is adjustable and it really is a proper adjustable 510 it doesn't loosen the deck inside it's completely separate piece so that piece of copper there is the part piece that runs through the inside to link up with the center pin it's solid it doesn't move and the 510 pin is a separate screw that screws into it and gives you full adjustment. Brilliant. Um, on a device of this type, that's most unusual. So there we go. The UD Goblin, um, all ready to 
vape. So let's go up top and let's have a vape and talk about it. So that's it for the close-ups on the rear view. In summary, uh, so, so very quickly here, I've got this, as you'd have seen in the intro, I've got this with the larger tank section section in the, in the close-ups. I put the smaller tank section on it. Uh, that was a few days ago. And uh, a couple of days ago, I decided to try the larger tank section to see if there was any difference in the vape between this and, uh, and the smaller one. There is a very slight difference. Slight decrease in flavour, only really slight, and slightly less warm vape, but really not that noticeable. It, it, there is a slight note, you can notice, but it really is only very slight. So if you like the additional capacity that the tank gives you, you don't lose a huge amount in terms of flavour and warmth by putting it on. Uh, it is quite a bit bigger, although it's reasonably in proportion with this particular box. Uh, I've got the, I've got here, I've got the smaller smock, uh, the M50 here, and it's starting to look a little bit more out of proportion on that with the larger tank section. So it's not looking too bad on that. That's, uh, that's all right. One of the things that I mentioned in the close-ups was the juice control, not juice, the air control. So on a tube mod, it's actually not too bad. You can so just so you can grab the air control relatively easily, and you can turn it round. If, however, I put it on a box mod, something like, especially this particular smock which has the little recess in it and there's a few boxes that have that you can't really very easily grab it from the sides you can but it's a bit of a fiddle um, and you have to kind of grab it from the top and it's a fiddle basically so that's that's one negative uh, if we're talking negatives that's one negative or anything it does make it look very sleek. It makes the design very sleek, but the um, trade-off for the sleek looks is a, a slightly fiddly uh, airflow control ring. The other negative is, as I said, the thickness of. So you can see that. I don't know if that's focused. There you go. So you can see that's a really hefty piece of. Pyrex, which some might say is a positive, it's less likely to break if you clunk it or drop it. Oh, yeah. However, that thickness means that you've got very little space between the glass and the chimney section, and that makes filling it from the fill hole a pain, an absolute pain. The other day I did discover that if you grab the glass here while it's just grab it while it's on a mod it's easier because you can grip the mod and then grab it and pull down so you've got a downward force on that to hold the glass steady then you can unscrew the top cap it doesn't leak everywhere and with the un with the top cap unscrewed you've then got plenty of room to fill up to the top of the glass level with a juice and put the top back on. Now you don't get a full tank that way. There, there, there is, let's have to take that off again. So you can see there's an amount of space in there that, I know it's not focusing, but you get the idea. There's a, a space in there that you don't get to fill with that method. But if you do want to do a quick refill, quick top up, then that's one other way of getting some juice in this device without having to go through the rigmarole that you'll have seen in the close-ups. But that's pretty much it for the negatives. Positives on this, flavour. Absolutely top-notch flavour. Warm vape, but not too hot. The really nice warm vape. Um, the throat hit is reasonable. I. I vape, I vape very low um, 
I vape very, that's my cat, I vape very low nicotine juice. So I tend not to have a very high throat hit anyway. Uh, that's very distracting. Teddy, come say hello to the people. This is Teddy. Say hello, Teddy. You see, he's got extra toes on his paws. He's got seven toes on his front paws and he's got six toes on his back paws, haven't you, Teddy? Yes, and you're meowing for food in the middle of my review. Hmm? Okay, I'm gonna let you go now. Say bye-bye to the people. Okay, off you go. <laughs> Sorry, guys. That's Teddy the cat. Where was I? <laughs> Positives, yes. Flavour, warmth of vape, ease of build. So easy to build on this device. There's a separate build tutorial also up on the channel if you want to watch that. Ease of wicking. This device is so easy to wick. I've had no leaking, no dry hits, no flooding. Uh, it's absolutely spot on from a full tank all the way to the very bottom. It empties the tank completely without any problems. I haven't had gurgling, nothing. I really like this tank. This has become my all day vape. It's, it's, uh, it's superseded the e-grip uh, in terms of taking it with me to work and, and uh, having a vape in my brakes. So all in all, for 30, under 30 pounds, UD have knocked it out of the park. I highly, highly recommend this tank. If you're looking for a rebuildable tank, this has got to be on your list near the top. Let's have another vape and then we'll say goodbye. Thanks very much. Come back again. See you next time.